Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, may have one of the most stable marriages in the royal family, but it hasn't always been easy. If you thought Harry and Meghan's Oprah interview was shocking, just wait until you hear about the Sophie tapes. It seems like a lot of people in lasting marriages agree. When you know, you know. But for Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, their initial meeting did not result in sparks or butterflies. The two initially crossed paths in 1987, when they met at Capitol Radio. Sophie and Edward met through a friend of hers whom Edward was dating at the time, so nothing romantic happened between them for some time. It'd be another six years before Edward and Sophie would meet again, and so many things changed for the royal family at the time. The early 1990s wreaked havoc on royal marriages. From Prince Charles and Diana Spencer, to Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips, to Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, in. All the royal romances seemed to collapse in real time. Cue Sophie and Edward, who, now both single, started a relationship in 1993 after seeing each other at a charity event. While it reportedly wasn't love at first sight, these two would be in it for the long haul. Every couple goes through their rough patches, and believe it or not, Prince Edward and Sophie almost didn't make it. The mid-1990s proved to be difficult for the couple, as they were allegedly precariously close to calling it quits just one year into their romance. Ingrid Seward, a royal expert and author of the book Prince Edward, wrote that a number of arguments started to take a toll on the couple, and that by 1994, their relationship began to unravel. Seward wrote, like all couples, there were moments when the effort of adjusting led to rows and disagreements, and in the summer of 1994, they came precariously close to parting. So what pulled the couple through the tough times? The solution was, in part, thanks to Sophie's tenacity. Seward noted that Edward had not only witnessed all of his siblings suffer through separations and divorces, but he himself was also recovering from a bit of a bachelor reputation. It was thanks to Sophie's dedication and desire to not let the relationship flounder that she and the prince made it through. When it came time for Sophie to dazzle Queen Elizabeth, let's just say she reportedly fell a bit flat. In her book Prince Edward, Ingrid Seward revealed that the Queen didn't take to the future Countess of Wessex very kindly. She reportedly thought that Prince Edward's love interest didn't command much attention. Seward wrote, The Queen, cloaked in Her Majesty dignity, can be chillingly imperious in her disapproval, and her first appraisal of Sophie was disconcerting in the extreme. Seward also added that the monarch's initial comment regarding Sophie was, You wouldn't notice her in a crowd. What the Queen may not have realized at the time, however, was that Sophie's sensible and low-key approach may have been the best thing for the royal family. At the time, Diana Spencer was in the headlines for less than flattering reasons. I'd like to be a queen of people's hearts in people's hearts, but I don't see myself being queen of this country. With time, the Queen began to take to Sophie quite fondly. Seward even noted that if Elizabeth had really wanted Edward to pursue a romantic relationship with someone else, she would have made it impossible for him and Sophie to be together. Despite their rough patches, Prince Edward and Sophie continued to move forward with their relationship. According to Vanity Fair, the couple's friends concluded that Sophie and Edward's opposite personalities helped their relationship grow. Additionally, their blossoming dynamic was detailed by authors Garth Gibbs and Sean Smith in their book Sophie's Kiss. Some people were surprised that two individuals like Sophie and Edward hit it off, but mutual friends saw the pairing as mutually beneficial. A friend shared with the authors, Sophie is good fun, a laugh, attractive, and the sort of girl most men would enjoy chatting with. And Edward is serious, quiet, but when Edward's with Sophie, he becomes good fun too. It's extraordinary the effect she has on him. When you've been romantically involved with someone for a while, questions about proposing seem to catch on like wildfire. Members of the press asked Edward multiple times if he was going to pop the question, and it's clear the scrutiny got to him. In a bit of an outburst, according to Express, he reportedly said, If you shut up, mind your own business, and let me do it when I want, it's much more likely to happen. The more people second guess, the less likely it is I just won't do it. What was aiding Edward's grief over the matter? No doubt it was the lack of privacy that he and Sophie endured as part of their lives as royals. We've all been through there. We've all had that same spotlight shone on our lives." Despite the pressure Prince Edward clearly felt on a regular basis, he finally asked Sophie to marry him in 1999. Edward and Sophie were thrilled to announce the news, as were Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. At the time of the engagement announcement, no further details about the impending nuptials were shared. But Edward and Sophie did express their desire to get married at St. George's Chapel. An official statement from Buckingham Palace revealed that Edward and Sophie sought permission to get engaged by both sets of their parents over the Christmas holiday of the previous year, and they made a point of keeping their engagement under wraps until all parents could give their consent. As for the ring, Edward got down on one knee with an engagement ring from Asprey Garrard, which featured three diamonds in a modern setting. Royal weddings truly feel like social events of the year, or even the decade. But Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, decided to go for a bit of a toned-down version of events. 
the couple's jubilant celebration was far more of a joyous occasion than an overtly formal occasion, although it still managed to generate about 200 million television viewers around the world. What else made it significantly different from other royal weddings? Well, it did not feature any military or state involvement, which was certainly a shift from tradition. As for Sophie's dress, because we know you want the details, she opted for a silk organza gown from designer Samantha Keswick. The simple yet effective gown was ordained with 325,000 pearls and crystals, and she paired her wedding day look with the Anthemian tiara. Photos from the day show the happy couple, accompanied by then-teenagers William and Prince Harry, as well as the queen, of course. If you consider yourself a bit of a royal expert or just a fan of all things British monarchy, then you'll know that royal engagements seem to occur out of nowhere. And this is how long after you first met? Oh, it would be a, a year and a half, two, yeah. a little bit more than that. No, uh, just about, about, about a year and a that. half, yeah. But for Prince Edward and Sophie, their courtship and dating life spanned about half a decade. Sophie recalled to the Sunday Times that the time they took made all the difference, sharing, I'd had five years to adjust. During the interview, Sophie was positioned to ruminate on Harry and Meghan's timeline in comparison to her own. She admitted that the time spent actually dating Edward and being engaged to him made her adjustment to royal life far easier than Meghan and Harry's experience. Sophie shared with the Sunday Times, For our six-month engagement, I was even staying in Buckingham Palace. Not that you necessarily know how it will pan out. Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, are definitely rising in popularity, but you might be surprised to find out they stumbled quite a bit when they first got married. Their floundering was quite surprising, given that Sophie co-owned a public relations firm at the time. But nevertheless, their first months of marriage weren't easy. The newlywed couple first came under fire when it became public that they had included a $99,270 tea set on their wedding registry. Then, of course, were the infamous Sophie tapes, which were secretly recorded conversations involving Sophie and her then-business partner, Murray Harkin. From Murray's alleged drug use to Edward's sexuality to even supposed business deals and development to cash in on their position as royals, the tapes did not show Sophie or her business partner in a favorable light. To make matters worse, Sophie had also railed on the royal family members, from Prince Charles to Camilla Parker Bowles, during the recorded conversations. Prince Edward and Sophie may have had some pretty big slip-ups in the early months of their marriage, but all the fervor and judgment seemingly melted away when Sophie's life was in jeopardy. As noted by the Daily Mail, Sophie's birth experience with the couple's first child, Lady Louise Windsor, was so horrific that it has impacted her life ever since. It was November 2003, a month before her due date, and everything about Sophie's pregnancy seemed to be going smoothly. Edward jumped on a plane to Mauritius for an official but seemingly normal royal visit, but soon after Edward's departure, Sophie began experiencing pain in her abdominal area. Sophie experienced a placental abruption, which led her to undergo an emergency C-section. The birth experience, according to a friend of the Countess, left her scarred. They shared with the Daily Mail, It was utterly traumatic, and in some ways, Sophie has never got over it. Prince Edward and Sophie successfully welcomed their daughter into the world, despite the horrific circumstances surrounding her birth. By the time their son was born in 2007, Sophie and Edward's relationship had emerged more in the public eye. They soon began to mature into their roles as senior, full-time royals. For Sophie, the shift marked a significant change in her life. Unlike some other spouses who married into the royal family, Sophie had a successful professional career before joining the firm, and as such, she had to shift her perspective on what it meant to be a working royal. She spoke with the Sunday Times about the shift, saying, Saying, I had to reduce my expectations of what I could actually do, and I had to take a really big step back and go, okay, they want you to be the icing on the cake, the person to come in to thank their volunteers and funders, not necessarily to tell them how to run their communications plan. While Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, are rising stars within the royal family, they have made it a priority to keep their two children out of the spotlight. Lady Louise Windsor and James Viscount Severn may be pictured from time to time, but Edward and Sophie certainly seem to respect their children's privacy. After all, being the grandchild of Queen Elizabeth is already a significant title to wear. However, Edward and Sophie did such a good job keeping their kids away from the hustle and bustle of royal life that their daughter Louise didn't even realize her grandmother was, in fact, the Queen of England. In an interview with Sky News, Sophie shared that when Louise was younger, she had, quote, no concept of her grandmother's occupation. The Countess explained that her young daughter didn't realize the Queen of England and her grandmother were the same person, and it was only when she attended school that it started to click for her. Sophie added, Other children were mentioning it and saying, Your gran is the queen. And she'd come home and say, Mommy, they say that grandmama is the queen. And I said, Yes. And she said, I don't understand what they mean. It seems as though the royal family is changing in real time. From Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's departure to Prince Philip's death, the dynamics in one of the most storied institutions are shifting rapidly. As such, Prince Edward and his wife Sophie, Countess of Wessex, have stepped up in a big way. One such occasion where Edward took the lead was at the opening of the General Synod in November 2021. 
The opening is a prominent day for the Church of England, and it was surprising that Queen Elizabeth sent Edward in her place. But nevertheless, her youngest son stepped up and filled in for her at the storied event. Unfortunately, the, the pandemic has slightly slewed things in as much as it's hard to spend as much time with the Queen. With two kids, changing royal responsibilities, and of course the public eye, you might wonder where things stand between Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, today. We're happy to report that the couple seems to be just as happy with each other now as they were when they got married. In fact, they recently celebrated the 23rd anniversary of their engagement. According to Hello, Edward and Sophie couldn't stop gushing about each other when they announced their engagement, and what they said truly is worth revisiting. Remarking that he didn't know why it took him so long to propose, Edward said of his now wife, "...we are the very best of friends, and that's essential, but it also helps that we also love each other very much." Of her now husband, Sophie also chimed, "...I think we share a number of interests. We laugh a lot, and we have a great friendship. Check out one of our newest videos right here." Plus, even more list videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.